Christ be, your love be. 
we do that we just like to say a word of prayer would you please stand as we say a word of prayer eyes closed lord we thank you lord for being here we ask you, O Lord, to hasten the footsteps of those who are on their way, bring them here safely, Heavenly Father. Lord, we ask you, O Lord, to be with those who are grieving at this time. We ask you, O Lord, that you comfort them, and ask you, O Lord, that you bless them all. This is our prayer, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Please sit. I don't know how many of you got the program. We begin with hymn number 12, if you have it. Joyful, joyful, we are to Joyful, joyful, we are which is hymn number 205. If you have your hymn notes, you can follow. Hymn number 205, Gleams of the Golden Morning. Oh, we see the gleams of the 
to eat sweet by and by. There's a land that is fairer than day. And by faith we can see it afar. For the Father waits over the way to prepare us a dwelling place there.
discussion on. Taken from the book of Psalms 19. And it says, Lord, you have been our dwelling place in all generations. Before the mountains were brought forth, forever you have formed the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting. You are God. You turn man to destruction and say, Return, O children of men, for a thousand years in your sight, are like yesterday when it is past, and like a watch in the night. You carry them away like a flood, they are like a sleep. In the morning, they are like grass which grows up. In the morning, it flourishes and grows up. In the evening, it is cut down and withers. For we have been consumed by your anger, and by your wrath we are terrified. You have set our iniquity before you, our secret sins in the light of your countenance. For all our days have passed away in your wrath. You finish our years like a sigh. The days of our lives are seventy years, and if by reason of strength they are eighty years, yet their boast is only labor and sorrow. For it is soon cut off, and we fly away. Who knows the power of your anger? For as the fear of you, so is your wrath. So teach us to number our days, that we may gain a heart of wisdom. Eternal Lord, how long? And have compassion on your servants to satisfy us early with your mercy, that we may rejoice and be glad all our days. May make us glad according to the days in which you have afflicted us. The years in which we have seen evil, let your work appear in your servants and your glory to your children. And let the beauty of the Lord our God be upon us and establish the work of our hands for us. Yes, establish the work can we all stand at this time for the open Keep our heads close eyes for prayer. Father in heaven, we thank you, God, for life. For life abundantly and life eternal, God. Even now as we are gathered here to celebrate the life of your daughter who has passed from this life, God. We pray for your Holy Spirit to fill this place in a very marked way. Touch every heart, God. May your everlasting arms embrace each soul that is here, Father. Be with the family. Be with the church, Father. And may your will be done in our lives. We pray that your presence be thick in this place, Father. As you comfort us, as you hold us up. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. May I believe.
If you want to see her, see the hand of all who want to see Sister Cheryl in heaven. All right, I see some hands in God, but I want to see her, and those who want to see her, and we will see her if we live that life. Amen? Amen. And I want to welcome you again, and rest assured that, you know, sometimes you're in funeral and, 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 and fighting to say something, to give comfort to that person, the way they live. But I know that is, is the sister that live a good life, a life that is right and pleasing in God's sight. All right, so um, these things happen. As the Lord says sometimes, he cut some of our lives short that because we might be able to make it in time of trouble. But Sister Cheryl, rest assured that she will make it by the hope of God, make it to the everlasting kingdom. Welcome back.
this time, we will now answer the segment where greetings and tributes are brought by a number of representatives. So at this time, we want to call the ministry, the school supervisor, and that is present with us today, which will be followed by Mr. Hugh Brittle from the Blackpool Secondary School. Never be so focused on your own life that you miss out on the opportunity to be a blessing in the lives that you encounter. I think that we will all agree that Sharon lived her life in such a way that this could easily be used as her motto. Good day, everyone. I am Hugh Brito, teacher at Guaito Secondary School. Sharon Bologna was a colleague and a friend. Cheryl joined our staff on the 20th of August, 2003, and she will always be a member of our staff. Cheryl was a wonderful person who impacted countless lives, not only in her role as a teacher, but also as a member of a church and generally in the person she met in society. As one teacher said, Cheryl was very good at the art of persuasion. If she had an idea that she wanted you to buy into, she was able to reach out to you and convince you to agree with her point. One distinct testimony to this was one of our Father's Day celebrations for the male members of staff. Cheryl would usually be found assisting quietly in the background and supporting and getting things done. But that year, Cheryl came up with the idea to have a cowboy-themed event. Many of the female teachers recounted that Cheryl literally helmed the planning and organizing of this event. When the principal seemed hesitant about the cost, Cheryl Ann was able to put her point across firmly and convincingly enough that the principal relented and allowed the celebration to move on. Cheryl stayed up many nights till the wee hours of the morning, making the centerpieces for the table. She said that she wanted everything to be perfect. And one teacher said that Cheryl asked her to play the part of a cowgirl, and Cheryl bought her her first and only cowboy hat. I think all the teachers agree that Father's Day celebration was the best one to date. She had an, an entrepreneurial spirit, and as such, had a very acute business sense and was always seeking to improve herself while encouraging others to do so themselves. One teacher indicated that she always encouraged him to invest in a second stream of income, to look at what he liked and invest in that. Cheryl was not afraid to put herself out there to attempt a venture, and even if that venture was not successful, she was willing to try others again and again. Cheryl was indeed caring and selfless. This was shown when another colleague, Mrs. Blackwell, was ill. Both Cheryl Ann and Regan were very much instrumental in assisting and caring for her. And they would travel from their home in Sangre Chiquito all the way to Darby, even after work, in order to assist. 
even in my own life, when I went through my time of trial, Sharalan was there at my side, supporting and helping me to stay afloat, to stay positive. Many teachers spoke about Sharal's warm and approachable nature. One teacher even referred to her as a gentle giant. Of course, we all know Sharal's stature, so it was safe to say that at first, she appeared a bit intimidating to many of our teachers. But Cheryl always had a smile on her face, or it was never very far away. And teachers indicated that as once you began talking to her, on with her, and get to know her, it became clear how much of a sweet person she was. Miss Moore, her co-form teacher, said this. She was the perfect good cup, bad cup partnership. Of course, with her being the good cup, the good cup. She was truly a sweet and understanding individual. And the balance she brought to the form class will be missed. Another teacher called her her favorite Adventist. For sports, everyone just fell into their, their role in, in their sport houses. And in the Blue House, Cheryl Ann's role was to be the avid supporter. She wasn't able to train the March Pass team or the athletes, but on the day of the sports, Cheryl would be seen running all the way down the field with the students, screaming and cheering them along. So actually, Cheryl Ann turned out to be fitter than even the athletes themselves because at the end of the day, she would have run so many miles. For one sport day in particular, when the leaders of the house realized that some of the marchers were missing stockings, both Sherilyn and another teacher were in a rima up to minutes before the event started, looking for stockings for the students. Our acting vice principal remembers that both that she, Sharalan, Mr. Komena, Mr. Ramakan, Mr. Bidesi, and Mr. Daniel all entered Waiku Secondary on the same day. And as fate would have it, they all sat in the same row, one behind the next in the staff room. And as I spoke with teachers about the times we spent with Sharal, one teacher shared a story that happened one afternoon. It was a story that I don't think I had heard before. It was just about time for school to be dismissed, and at that time there were many um, ladies in the staff room getting themselves ready to leave. When suddenly they heard the door from the female washroom burst open, and they turned around to see Cheryl standing there, dusting her clothes and breathing heavily. Cheryl said, Only oh, didn't hear me calling. Turns out that unbeknownst to the teachers, one of the stalls in the washroom, um, the latch to that door would sometimes become stuck. And Cheryl Ann was in that washroom, and there she was trying to get out, knocking and calling. When she realized no one was hearing and school was soon be emptied, Cheryl Ann climbed over the door of the stall through the little space to come out into the staff room. Well, from that day, the teachers all realized that that door needed to be fixed. Another teacher indicated that she remembers that she and Cheryl Ann became close because of their daughters, especially when they were doing swimming lessons together. She says she will ensure that the girls maintain the great bond that they have built. Of course, we cannot speak of Cheryl Ann without talking about her fashion sense. She liked to look nice, and she knew how to look nice. So Cheryl Ann was always fashionably attired and would ensure that she would have her hair styled regularly. Teachers expressed how much they admired her for her sense of style. On Monday night, I spoke with some past students who fondly remembered their, their dear Mrs. Bolondia and they reminisced about the many qualities that they admired about her. 
Cheryl was a gem amongst all the rough dirt and grime in this world. It was a pleasure knowing her and having her as a friend and as a colleague. I shall end with this little quote that captures to me the essence of Cheryl Ann. Hate no one, no matter how much they've wronged you. Live humbly, no matter how wealthy you become. Think positively, no matter how hard life is. Give much, even if you've been given little. Forgive all, especially yourself, and never stop praying for the best for everyone. Cheryl. Sleep in perfect peace, my friend. You will always be remembered for the beautiful soul that you are. Thank you, Brother Brito. Good afternoon. I'm not part of the program, but it would be remiss not to bring greetings on behalf of her form class. So just bear with me for one minute, please. Tristan Alexis, Jarrell Hernandez, Paul James, Tyron Joseph, Jaden Mason, Theron Patrick, Jamil Peer, Marcus Richard, Akash Samaru, Joshua Sandy, Nigel Sharma, Ronaldo Solomon, Terrell Sylvan, Elijah Thomas, Chelsea Batiste, Adia Charles, Alana Edmond, Therese Greenwich, Sarah Herrera, Jada Innes, Chinoa Job, Alicia John, Michaela Manley, Sienna Pereira, Katie Phillips, Kiara St. Louis, Kima Thomas, Cheryl Venus, Khadija Vinson, and Alana Weeks. These were not the first students that she claimed as her own, but they were her last. This, or these are the names of her form students, 42. And I know, I don't know how far back some of you have to go, but the one teacher that you never forget is your form teacher. That's the teacher that you go to when you're in trouble, when you're looking for trouble, and even when trouble comes looking for you. So as a class, we have lost something that I can't even begin to describe. As I said before, she was my balance. She, was the, she really was the gentle one. The one who was so soft-spoken that when she buffed, when she buffed, they didn't even feel scolded. In fact, they probably felt bad for bringing her to the point where she had to buff them up in the first place. And even during the time when she was home, which must have been very difficult, she still found the time to ask about them. She kept updated on their progress on our chat. And we even discussed what could be done for specific students. Our physical time as a class was short, but her gentle demeanor, her, her soft-spoken nature, her forgiven nature, memories of that will stay with us as a class. Now, almost all of them wanted to be here, but ministry COVID restrictions prevented that. But to her family, the 42 class we offer our sincere condolences and our prayers that God will continue to be your comfort and your strength. Thank you. Thank you, sister. We want to now call Brother Sherwin Francois, one of the elders of the New Launch SDA Church, followed by Mrs. Khan Paul and Leon Bengoche to bring tribute. Please be concise with your tributes. Thank you. Even before I bring my greetings, I just want to let you all know 
that um, if you need to use the washroom, it's along this corridor. And when you enter the back, you swing to the right, straight down there, you will see both male and female signs over the door. So you know where the washrooms are. All right, keep in mind that we need to still follow our COVID protocol, even though we could sit next to each other. Let us still be careful and sanitize as much as possible. Keep your masks on. I need to cough mine because I'm, I'm speaking. Now, um, on behalf, this, at this time, I want to bring greetings on behalf of the Newlands Seventh-day Adventist Church. Amen? Amen. As well as my, the France, <coughs> France of family. I, I, <coughs> I was glad to have this opportunity to at least say some words this, mo this morning or almost e evening, sorry. Yeah, but um, Cheryl have been an integral part of this church. She grew up in this church. She grew up in the village. And everybody in the village know who is Cheryl and Guadeloupe at the time. She's now Cheryl and Bologna. I could tell you that she sat right on the left-hand side here in church. She was one that uh, was really loved by each of us. And she had a passion for singing. When you hear the mention, okay, we will now have special music by the God Loop sisters, then you will see Cheryl Ann will get up, and Alicia, her sister, would follow after, and then they would come here and render to us beautiful heavenly music as God would have blessed them with such a voice. Amen. I know that, that we all will miss that sincerely. Cheryl, Cheryl got married to this handsome gentleman, Regan, and her name became Cheryl Wadloop Bologna. We still know her just as Cheryl. And I can tell you, Cheryl stay away for two years from the Newlands Church. When she come here, you can never tell the difference. Everybody moved with her the same way. She likewise, she has never changed. I know she was a very persistent person, and I heard that earlier on, whenever she pursued anything, and we always remain in contact, not just me, but most of the members in the new lands remain in contact with her. I know Cheryl Parson is a, a big loss to all of the entire family, both Bologna and uh, the Godlook family, but she's a big family. She is a loss even to the entire church family as well. <laughs> but we know, as we said earlier on, that Cheryl is persistent. And I can tell you she is very persistent in serving her Lord. Yes. Amen? Amen? And I can tell you with that persistent, I am sure that God would have prepared a place for her, likewise for us as well. So we say, have comfort. Regan and your daughter, have comfort knowing that you will see Cheryl one day on that sea of glass. So to each and every one, and on behalf of the church again, I say, have a blessed day. Thank you. All right, is Miss Khan Paul in the building? Leaders and officers of the Seventh day Adventist Church, brothers and sisters, family members, friends, boys and girls, a pleasant good afternoon. On behalf of the minister and members of the Vega de Oroput SDA Church, I extend to you, Regan, Rian, and all family members our heartfelt condolences on the passing away of an irreplaceable gem. A wife, a mother, a sister, a daughter-in-law, a sister-in-law, an aunt, a niece, a cousin, 
a co-worker, a friend, a teacher, just a wonderful spiritual child of God. Sister Cheryl Ann Guadalupe Bologna, fondly called by us Cheryl. Vega de Urupu Church has experienced a tremendous loss in the person of Cheryl, a former Sabbath school superintendent, a family life and woman ministry secretary, and a supportive member of the Pathfinder Club. She was a true example of class, as echoed by many, and someone with such a creative mind who always thought out of the box. She was diligent and did her best in whatever she undertook. Her memories will live on for a very long time. She will be truly missed by all. Such a very caring and soft-spoken person. You know, I never really sh saw Cheryl got angry. I remember this vividly. One day I was talking to her by her mother-in-law right in front of the road, by the road. And her daughter, Rian, came running to her. And she just grabbed the phone, and the phone fell. And it was a new phone. And had it been me, you know, I would have agitated, and I would have been hot. But Cheryl was so calm. She just looked at the child, and she smiled at me, and she didn't say a word. And I told her, say, girl, is an expensive phone. She said, well, that ain't nothing. Such a wonderful person. Only God knows what you, the family, are feeling in your heart. And only he can restore your spirit. May God be near to every family member during this sad time. May you be granted the strength to bear the loss. And may God bless and keep you in his care. Remember, our thoughts and prayers are with you, Regan, Rian, and your family members during this difficult time. May the Lord be your strength and comforter. I thank you. All right, we now have Leon Bengoche, who will bring the final set of greetings. Pleasant good afternoon to each and everyone. And uh, may I again welcome you all to the home going of Cherland Guadalupe Bolinda. Uh, a lot of the sentiments expressed here this afternoon suits, suits Cherland to a T. Now, Cherylan is my niece, my sister's daughter. So I knew her from birth. And if I could give you a little thing, when my sister went to the hospital to make Cherylan, I got a message that she may need blood. Went down to the hospital on that Sunday morning. And as I reached, I told the nurse, um, I'm looking for Miss Phyllis Waterloo. Said, yes, yeah, she had a child last night. Um, come and see your daughter. So they took me in to see my daughter. <laughs> right? And I saw Cheryl, I told my sister Phyllis after, I said, um, she said, well, you stopped here, you didn't tell her. I said, no. This is my daughter, so I went to see my daughter. <laughs> All right? Cheryl, and, as everybody says, very strong will. I remember when she got her first teaching appointment, she stayed by me and my family. And I would take, take her to work every morning. And I had to listen to all of Cheryl plans. And I can tell you, in retrospect, she followed it to a T. She had her life planned out from very early. And once she made up her mind to do something, she moved forward. If you try to say, Cheryl, oh yes, I will think about it. But that thinking about it, you know that she will go ahead with what is planned. I also 
I don't want, and I don't want Cheryl is going home, and I want to, to, to dwell a bit on the, the rest of the family because she has a, a husband here, and we say he's handsome. But besides being handsome, um, I think they matched each other well, right? And speaking to her one day on the phone, we would speak from time to time, and. Um, as she told me one day, we don't speak that regular. So when we're speaking, everybody had a rock so you know. And that was. So uh, speaking with her on the phone one day, she told me, um, I, she said, I thank God for Reagan. I said, yes, you've got the perfect husband. She said, no, 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 no. You know, only men. And with that voice, she said, I don't know what I will do without Reagan. And she went on to explain what he will do for her and what he will not do for her. And he was always there for her. Yes. So at this point, I want to thank Reagan, Rian, the Bolandina family, because I know they were there for Cheryl to the end. Yes. Regardless, when I speak with her sometimes, I say, how are you making out? Um, think, she said, well, Regan coming home tomorrow, but don't fight. Regan sits down there organizing things. So I, I, I know for myself that she was well taken care of by the Bolandia family. So Regan, I, Regan, I want to assure you this, right? My niece is gone, but you have the Bengoshe family. You will always be a nephew-in-law. And we will always be there for you, no matter what you, your plans are and how you plan to move forward. We will be there for you all, right? Come hell or high waters. Because you have done so much for our family. When I looked at what, how we performed and my mother was sick. When my sister was mother-in-law was sick, he was here for them. So I want to look at the living here uh, while we mourn the loss of Cheryl, and it's very hurtful, but we, got, we will be there for you. Thank you. Amen. Thank you so much, Brother Leon. We will now be blessed with an item of special music by Sister. Oh, I don't want to say Sister. Kenny. I don't. I'm sorry. If I butchered that name. Kenny Bolindia.
time well before we have the eulogy I just want to introduce you all to the platform here my name is Pastor David Leonard of the Mayoral District of Seventh-day Adventist Churches to my right your left or my left your right sorry we have the first elder Ozzy John of the New Lands SDA Church and to my right your left we have Pastor Ronald Josiah the pastor of the Rio Claro District of Adventist Churches and to my near Right, we have a Newlands native, amen, born and raised, uh, Pastor Micah Johnson of the Curep District. And so at this time, we want to invite Shilon Bengoche to give us the eulogy. When I wrote this eulogy, I knew it was going to be a difficult one for me. And so I'm going to ask my daughter this afternoon. To present the thing.
today is with great difficulty that I stand before you to deliver this eulogy of Cheryl Ann Guadalupe Bologna. Difficult, I say, because to all of us, we have lost someone who touched lives anywhere she went, and to see her life cut short, it is not easy. God, however, had different plans. And he said, I have seen your trials and pain. You have toiled and labored incessantly, and now it is time for you to rest until Jesus comes. I dare say she was my favorite niece, and I think I speak for Leon and Stephanie as well. Born on February 9, 1974, to James Guadalupe, Cheryl came to live with us from the tender age of three years old and spent her favorite years under the watchful eyes of her grandfather and grandmother, Santiago and Eugenia Bengoshi. What made her special? So loved by all, she came into contact with. It was not because of her dedication as a child to her parents and grandparents, or the fact that she worked so hard to ensure that she only got full CXC and K passes, but a degree and her masters in the field of education. Or was it because she was an external supervisor where she used to grade CXC and Cape students. I submit to you none of the above, but a deep and humble lifestyle spent loving and caring for others, always giving of herself, never looking for anything in return. One of her loves was cooking and baking. She was a great cook, and maybe that was one of the reasons that caused the short skinny fella called Reagan to leave Orapooch, Sandy Grandy, to come all the way to Guayagarari in search of making Cheryl his wife. It must be noted that he regularly arrived, especially on Sunday, exactly 30 minutes before lunch, knowing fully well Cheryl was the one cooking. Yes, that same Reagan who spent four years only looking at Cheryl and not uttering a word. His patience and persistence paid off on December 17, 2000. Cheryl and Reagan began, became husband and wife, remaining faithful to each other until the time of her death. Their union bore one daughter, Rianne Bolondia. Allow me to therefore tell you not about who she was, but what made her whom she was. Simply put, it was because of her belief. She believed in God. She believed that his son died for our sins and is coming back again for a ready people. She believed that she was special, part of a royal priesthood, a chosen generation, a peculiar people, and therefore her life should be one of example. She believed in being a good and faithful wife, mother and friend. Her life was one of love, dedication to Reagan, always ensuring he received love, good gifts, a beautiful daughter, attention, and of course, good food. She believed that she should be a dedicated and wonderful mother to Rian, ensuring that all her needs were met whether they were physical, mental, educational, financial, or spiritual. She believed in devotion to her students and being dedicated to service. Her heart was full of love, overflowing with kindness and joy, an ever-present smile telling you everything would be all right. But Cheryl could be other things also. She was mischievous, cunning, and playful as any other human being. She loved curry. Well, she loved to eat, covers it all. Maybe that's why she chose the feel of food and nutrition. She can be found on occasion singing songs with Alicia, Liz, Sharon, and Anne, or concocting some mischief as children growing up, always seeking to take control of a situation. She was always involved in some business or trying to rope you in some new deal on the market. Yes, 
an entrepreneur she was. She tried to be on neutral ground or never expect her to take sides or create more tension that, than was already existing. And if you had to get into trouble, then you will, on your own, get your licks by yourself. Don't get her on her wrong side because she can show a solid punch and if connected, it can land you in the hospital. I am sure that there are a few who can testify to that. As I remember, there was this guy who said he was in love with Cheryl. Now, Regan, that was before your time, okay? But he was tracking another cousin of hers also. Don't ask me how they found out. Maybe it was because they were always talking and planning and conniving together. But they did. Boy, that guy got an experience of his life. I don't think he ever wants to see any of those cousins again. Even though in pain and trauma. Even though in pain and trauma. As she went from day to day. Cheryl believed that in God, everything will be all right. And so she used certain passages of scripture as her mantra. The book of Job. For I know that my Redeemer liveth, and that he shall stand in the latter day. And though worms destroy this body, yet in my flesh I will see God. She believed in 1 Corinthians 15, 51 to 56. Yes, mm. Behold, I show you a mystery. Yeah. We shall not all sleep. Yes, sir. And one day this mortal shall put on immortality yeah. and this corruptible shall put on incorruptible. Yes, sir. Yeah. And it shall be said, O oh, death, where is thy sting? O oh, grave, where is thy victory? She believed in 1 Thessalonians 4, 16 and 18. Yes, sir. For the Lord himself shall descend with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. And so, on Saturday the 12th of March, I called Reagan and I asked him how Cheryl was going. And he said, She's going good, Uncle. She is in brighter spirits today than she was for a while. And Portia and they took her and they tidied her, changed her clothes, and prepared her in a manner that if any visitor shall come, she'll be ready. I had told Reagan that I would be down around 1 o'clock the evening, the afternoon. She made sure that Rayan got ready and went to church. And she sat down and she spoke with Reagan and she spoke with those who were there and then Portia and they left to go home to change and come back not knowing that she had everything planned and everything worked out. And then she spoke to her Lord. Yes, yes sir. Amen. And she said, Lord, I'm tired. I'm tired of the pain. I'm tired of the suffering. I'm tired. I'm ready to go home and rest. 
and saw at approximately 105 that Saturday afternoon, Cheryl passed away. Leaving to mourn her husband, Reagan, her daughter, Ryan, her brothers, Sean and Jameson, her sisters, Alicia, Sherry, and Tunisia, her mother-in-law, father-in-law, sisters-in-law, brothers-in-law, uncles and aunts, nieces, nephews, cousins, friends, and well-wishers. What more could we say? But the fact that she was no Mother Teresa, however, she was just one gone too soon. Reagan, Ryan, in closing this evening, allow me to quote from one of Cheryl's favorite songs. Sometimes I feel so lonely, and sometimes I feel so sad. Sometimes life makes me angry. Everything makes me mad. Amidst all of life's sorrow, amidst all of life's pain, my Jesus is always there to lift me up again. Amen. So stand up for Jesus. Don't matter what's wrong. Yes, Stand up for Jesus. Even if death come along. Stand up. Stand up. Yes, sir. Stand up. Yes. Stand up strong. Amen. Would you say amen? Shall now be blessed with an item of special music by Miss Hanuman, followed by the scripture reading done by Pastor Josiah. Right as Miss Hanuman comes, I do want to apologize. I forgot to acknowledge Pastor Glendon Gilead, uh, the pastor of the Maracas district. If he and his wife can stand briefly. We thank you for being here, quite in the back. Thank you for being here as well. We want to acknowledge the wife of Pastor Josiah. Thank you for being here as well. We acknowledge your presence. Thank you.
Good afternoon. On behalf of my wife, Heather, and the Rio Claro Seventh-day Adventist Church, Rio Claro Seventh-day Adventist District of Churches, and myself, I'd like to express to you, Brother Regan, Bolondia, and Rianne, and the entire Bolondia family, and the Guadalupe family, and the McKnight family, my deepest sorrow and condolences on the passing of your beloved, even Cheryl Bolondia. This is a solemn time, and my wish for you is that God would comfort you. May God comfort you. We are turning to the scripture now, and I will invite you to stand, please, as I read from John chapter 11. John chapter 11, verses 20 to 25. Please follow and listen reverently as the, as the word of God is read. Now Martha, as soon as she heard that Jesus was coming, went and met him. But Mary was sitting in the house. Now Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that whatever you ask of God, God will give you. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. May God add his blessing to the reading of his holy word. You may have your seats. Once more, you will now be blessed with a special item of music by Sister Kathy Ann Johnson. And as she comes, after her, the next voice you will be you will hear is the voice of the preacher, our dear brother, friend, son, Pastor Micah Johnson, as he brings the word to us. Bless afternoon everyone. I am happy to be here to celebrate in the life of Charlotte. Um when you talk about the soul of a woman, I can remember her smile. And you know, to every time I say, this is the last time I'm going to sing in a funeral, somebody would call and say, this one passed. And when her husband called me, I had no choice but to say, I will. Um, I was not certain at Still not certain on which song I'm gonna do, but whichever one he plays, I will do that one. All right. <laughs>
Praise God for his presence with us. Amen. God is here. We praise God for the lives of so many people in whom Sister Cheryl, by the life she lived, she touched. I just got a message from my phone from Sister Richardson from the Public Service uh, Credit Union, I think it is, yes, um, sharing that she was a member and uh, so many individuals are messaging. Brothers and sisters, I'm struggling, but God has a word. Amen. Amen. And God has a word. I've done many funerals in my short time in ministry. At one time, it was every week, two funerals and three funerals every week. But there's something about when I stand on this pulpit at New Land. It hurts differently. And even though I journey with individuals in their grief and pain, I don't see a funeral as yet another funeral service. I hurt with the people, I cry with them. But at New Land, it was differently. Yeah. We praise God for, as I sat and listened to my father as a child, the talking about New Lands and your tab district. I w wish I lived in that time. But as I minister now, and I'm out there, I wish I was still here. Because there's something about New Lands. There is something about home. And every funeral I come to preach, Brother Ozzy told me, Brother John, Elder John told me that I'm going to get an appointment outside of a funeral. Praise God. And every time I come home and preach at a funeral, or the names, the memories come back of all the saints from New Land. Individuals like Sister Bengoche and Sister Godloop, Brother Godloop and Sister John, Brother John, 
Sister Bartholomew, Sister, Sister Ferrier, and the list goes on, Sister Holder, and the list goes on and on. But God has the word. But brothers and sisters, even as I must say that as a minister, I, um, I give my all in ministry. And uh, in moments like these, I do some reflection. I'm giving so much to the Lord in ministry in the area that I'm ministering. But I didn't even know that Sister Cheryl was sick. And it's sometimes painful to think that maybe you're neglecting the ones who invested so much in you. But God is good. Amen. I recognize the presence of Sister um, Sister Javil and, and her husband from Good News, where I pastor presently the Good News and Kurab Seventh-day Adventist Church in St. Augustine and Kurab. And recently, Sister Javil asked me, do you know Cheryl? I think was, yes. And she was on one of our program or prayer in the morning as we prayed together on Tuesdays. I didn't know she was not well. And even as I stumble asking God what to say to his people, because I myself needed to be ministered to before I can minister, I stumble on an old familiar passage of John 11. And I asked God, I said, God, everyone know that. But God told me that I'm going to minister to you first so that you can minister. And therefore, brothers and sisters, God has a word, and I believe that God will speak. The message is entitled, Even Now, Even Now, I'll Trust Him. Even Now, I'll Trust Him. Father in heaven, we thank you, God, that in times past, you have never failed to speak to your people. And Father, before me are a multitude of people with different and diverse feelings. Feelings I cannot begin to understand. And Father, they are listening, waiting to hear from Jesus. Oh, great God, speak as only you can. Speak to somebody amidst the grief, oh God. Speak to Regan. Speak to Rayan. Speak to the family. You find a way as only you can. Amen. With this lump of clay that stands now. Oh God, find a way and speak to your people. Please, God. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. As you look at the Bible in the book of John. And John the Apostle, he's pending and he, he's writing this preoccupy. And John is writing and he's writing a familiar passage of scripture. He, he's writing something that stood out to him throughout his years of ministry. John writes about the experience that Mary and Martha had at Bethany when Lazarus died and Jesus showed up. You see, my brothers and sisters, uh, allow me to speak about new lands. There is something about new lands. There, uh, when you're coming to new lands as a visitor, there is somebody called Brother Matt Knight. And when you're coming to Brother new, new lands, even though there is no food, even though he knew, he, he knew, knew beforehand that Sister Matt Knight didn't cook anything, somehow he will still invite you to come. And when he came, even though the mother said, I have nothing, but she'll go in the deep freeze and find something down inside there or in the freezer and cut it over. But brothers and sisters, even though it was food that was there for a long time, maybe, just because of the hospitality, the food tasted so well. As you look at this passage of scripture, there is something about being home. Something about being home in a place where you feel welcome. Being home in a place where you feel as if you are, are wanted there. There are some places that you go to and you feel the tension in the home as if they are thinking, when will you leave? But as we look at this passage of scripture, we see here Jesus. 
And Jesus would have spent many times, many of his time he spent. Let's keep praying for the family. Many times he spent at the home of Mary and Martha and Lazarus in Bethany. You see Jesus when he is going to Jerusalem, when he is going to uh, his feast. To Jerusalem, sometimes he will he will stop by and he will spend some time there. That, that was his home, away from home. Right. He will spend time there, and when he's there, he felt the hospitality. Yeah. Maybe the, 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 it, it felt as if he was in the presence of Cheryl. There was something about Cheryl as a child, as I grew up in New Land, just seeing Cheryl. She had an angelic smile. Uh, she had a powerful impact. Just being in a presence meant so much. Uh, there, there are some people who are blessed to, to captivate you. There are some people just being in their presence turns your sorrow into calm and peace. My brothers and sisters, Jesus is here. And he's here. And, 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 and Lazarus. Why is he in Jerusalem? Lazarus is sick. The word Lazarus means divine assistance. The word Lazarus means divine assistance or God assists. But here Mary and Martha, they are in Bethany. And I look at the word Bethany and the word of Bethany means a house of suffering. Here they are in the house of suffering called Bethany. And it appears to be in the time of suffering. In the house of suffering, divine assistance seem not to show up. How can you be there in your time of suffering? In your house of suffering, you cried out to the Lord. And at times he seemed just not to show up. Jesus on the cross, uh, even while he was there, God was with him, but at that time, he couldn't even feel the presence of God. And he cried out, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? My brothers and sisters, Satan will want us to believe that there is no divine assistance in the house of suffering. Uh, sometimes we believe that every delay is cruel. How can you delay when the one you love, the one who has been there for you, is sick? Mary and Martha, they looked at Lazarus. As you are sick, they brought cold water, I could just imagine, from the well. And they placed it on his burning brow. They were at his bedside all night. They never even took off their clothes. No one knows how their heart rang with anguish as they saw the, the hot bearded drops from his brow and tried to moisten his parched tongue and lips. But even then, they remembered Jesus. Yes, and even whilst they were grieving and, and it felt as if that the pain was so intense that their brother was sick, and it seemed that the sickness was unto death. They remembered Jesus and they sent someone to tell Jesus that Lazarus is sick because they believe that even now that Jesus is able. Yeah. You see, my brothers and sisters, as I look and as I listen to the theology and the life of Sister Cheryl, Sister Cheryl had an even now kind of faith. Even now, the worms will eat my flesh. Even now, God is still able. She had a faith like Abraham. Even now, when I'm about to slay my son, God will provide. She had a faith like the patriarchs that they believe that even now, God will come true. Amen. But I want to say this afternoon, that she didn't just have an even now faith. She had an even if Amen. faith. Like the true Hebrew boys, even if he doesn't show up, we will stand with God. I want to say to somebody today, in the time that we are living, as we near the coming of Christ, what God is saying to us through this death, what God is saying to us, we need to have an even if, and even now, Amen. and even if he doesn't show up, I will stand for him. My brothers and sisters, I want to encourage us to hold on. 
God cries upon us and he says, hold on. And even John the Revelator, as he stands on the Isle of Patmos, this dark volcanic island, sand, hearing the, the wave lashing the sand, heaven is open and he sees Jesus. Amidst all the play and counterplay of human history, he sees Jesus walking in the midst of the candlesticks. And the question that is asked, Pastor, how could I hold on in my suffering? How could I hold on in my pain? As I look at this passage, the Bible says Jesus is seen there walking in the midst of the candlesticks. Let us know that he is in control. Yeah. It was Isaiah in his predicament in Isaiah 6 and verse 1. The king had died even in battle. Uh, his own family, uh, Uzziah had died and, and, and Isaiah was worried. But he saw a vision of Jesus, of God himself high and lifted up. Telling him that even though what is happening here, at times Satan may make you feel as if I am not in control. But I want to let you know that I am still seated in a, seated in a place of authority. Amen. I am God. Amen. I'm large and in control. My brothers and sisters, Sister Cheryl, and Mary and Martha, and those of us who have gone through different challenges, God is saying to us that in times like these, he is holding. He's holding the four winds of strife. Brothers and sisters, things are going to get worse. They're going to get worse and worse and what God is crying out to us is that what will happen what happen what we must do is have a faith like Cheryl a faith that even now God is able and even if he chose not to yet will I trust him I went across and I asked Paul I said Paul give me some counsels he said tell the people what is written in Hebrews 4 and verse 14 seeing then that we have such great a high priest that has passed into the heaven. Jesus, the Son of God, hold fast your profession. Yeah. There are many things that may seem to shake us out. Many things that may seem to cause our heart to shut up. But God is saying, hold fast. Yeah. In times like these, yeah. what will keep us yeah. is not how well we can preach, yeah. how well we can sing, yeah. or how well we can pretend. What will keep us is our faith in God. Amen. The Bible tells us, church, Revelation 3 and verse 11, Behold, I come quickly, how fast which thou hast ensure that no man steal thy crown. Revelation 2 and verse 25 says, But which he hath already, hold fast till I come. First, Second Thessalonians 2 and verse 15, Therefore, brethren, stand fast, Hold the traditions which ye have been taught, whether by word or by epistle. Hebrews 6 and verse 18, Paul declares that by two immutable things in which it is impossible for God to lie, we might have such strong consolation who have fled for refuge, lay fall upon the hope that is set before us. They sent a messenger to Jesus. When they came to Jesus, the Bible says Jesus delayed two more days. That seemed very insensitive and uncaring. You see, brothers and sisters, I could have a million sermons to preach where I am. I love the people. I love them to death. But when Newlands call, everything has to just push aside. Because this is home. This is Newlands invested in me. The one who we invested in, we were there for Jesus. And the question is, when we needed him the most, why he didn't just show up? Brothers and sisters, the disciples were very happy that Jesus delayed because they recognized that they almost stoned Jesus to death in Bethany and Judea. And then when Jesus said, I'm going, he finally said, I'm going. The disciples were questioning if they themselves were going with him to death. You see, my brothers and sisters, one thing I learned is that, that, that love places itself in harm's way. 
You see, Jesus, because he loved us so much, he left the glory and splendor of heaven. He clothed himself with human pigmented skin, nested in the percent of a woman. And he came because love always finds a way. My brothers and sisters, there was a belief that once one dies, some heresy, some strange belief that is not biblical, that a spirit leaves the body and it stays around for three days. And after the third day, the body will be starting to get pale and it means at that time the spirit is locked out permanently. The spirit cannot re-enter. The spirit is, is, is there and he's just waiting to re-enter. But Jesus knew and it hurt his heart that even the people of God, the people of the book, the Jews, believed such heresy. That even when he came, the Bible says he, he was on his way and when he was on his way, he reached Bethany. Bethany. And Mary came, Mary and Martha, the Jews came and Mary fell at his feet. And they told him, he's dead. Even if you have come a little longer, my brother would have still be alive. The Bible says that Jesus groaned in his spirit. He groaned for two ways, for two reasons. He understood what they believe, that it was dangerous. That sort of spiritualism. The Bible says that the living know that they should die, but the dead knows nothing. At that very moment, Ecclesiastes chapter uh, 9, uh, 6 and 7, at that very moment, his thoughts perishes. No spirit goes roaming. And therefore, he groaned on the inside because of their poor theology. But there's another way the Bible says as he went by, he said, show me where they lay him. And the Bible says at that time, Jesus wept. I want to tell somebody, Brother Gregor, that a God we serve is a God who's touched with the feelings of our infirmity. Even though he knew what he was about to do, just seeing those he loved crying, the Bible says he broke down and Jesus wept. You see, sometimes we believe that there are some things that are too big, that God is only concerned about these big things in our life. But God is concerned about everything that concerns us. Amen. And just as Cheryl would sit down and plan her life, God sat down and planned Rayan's life. God sat down and planned Rayan's life. And my brothers and sisters, David reminds us that the Lord collects my tears in a bottle. Everything about us is so important to Jesus. That he spends time every day to number the hair on our head. God cares and God understands. The Bible says that I could just imagine as Jesus neared the tomb. Death started to tremble. Death recognized that his time had come to an end. He recognized that he could hold uh, that the one that is dead no longer. He can hold him no longer, but now he's in the presence of the resurrection of the life. And death starts to tremble because death knows that Jesus is, has arrived. My brothers and sisters, and he called out, Lazarus. You see, my brothers and sisters, Lazarus died with an air for the voice of God. I want to say today that only those who die with the air for the trumpet will resurrect when Jesus comes. There are some of us, we live our lives as if we are building permanent structures down here. We don't talk to this one, we don't talk to that one. We forget where we came from 
and how we struggle together as children. Mommy didn't have many, but mommy struggled. Mommy and daddy struggled to ensure we survive, and now we're not talking to each other. My brothers and sisters, we must die like Sharon with an air for the trumpet. Amen. That whenever Jesus calls, the old Baptist singer will say, the old Baptist song will say, No grave shall hold my body down. Amen. When the trouble of the Lord shall sound and the dead in Christ shall rise, no grave shall hold my body down. The dusty prison houses will one day give up their dead. The sea will all one day give up their dead. For the Bible says, The Lord shall listen with a shout, with the voice of the archangel. And the trouble of God and those who have died with a voice for the trumpet will be resurrected. The Bible says, as I close, that Lazarus came back to life. You see, knowing something may involve intuitive knowledge, acquired knowledge, or experiential knowledge. In the instance, intuitive knowledge, one literally knows something based on unconscious use of various senses. Acquired knowledge, one may get acquired knowledge from reading and observing and studying. But there is something that is called experiential knowledge. And I believe that even though Sister Cheryl had intuitive knowledge, she had acquired knowledge, she studied, she was bright. She also had experiential knowledge. From a child of New Lands, she was taught the scriptures. She was taught about Jesus. She had her own experience with God. Just like John and East Cheryl will have been here today. East Cheryl could have speak today. I believe she will say, Jesus, he walked with me and talked with me. And in my time on this earth, he told me that I am his child. He was my friend from day to day. He was a friend who sticks closer than a brother. Jesus was all the world to me, I could have, would have, she would have said. He was my life. He was my joy. He was my all. She would have said also that when I am sad, to him I went. And guess what? He never failed me. And then she'll have also said, I believe, I trust him now. I trust him even when my life was ebbing away. I still trust in Jesus. Even though it appears as if every strength was leaving my body, yet still I trusted him. My brothers and sisters, this is the kind of faith that God calls us to have, especially in times like these to the family allow me to remind you that sister Cheryl left a legacy of faith Amen. there are some people who leave a lot of things for their children but Rayan mommy left a legacy of faith for you mommy lived well that when people hear Cheryl and Rayan God is going to ensure that doors will just fly open for you. God will ensure that he will allow his blessings to overtake you. That you will walk into God's blessing. God will ensure that you will be with you in your uprising and your down sitting. God will ensure that you will bless whatever you put your hands to do. God will ensure that he bless your mind. He will take care of you, really. For God, for David said, fret not yourself because of evil doers, for they shall soon be cut down. If I was young, and I'm an old man, yet I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. Cheryl understood that even though she have to go, she lived well, well enough, that a legacy of faith that she left, God will be faithful to reward you and to give you it. 
God want to remind you, Brother Reagan, that God will keep you. His presence means everything. And in times like these, it was David who said, Moses who said, Lord, I will not go unless your presence go with me. It was Joshua who said, be strong and very courageous, don't be afraid. For I, your God, will be with you. Brothers and sisters, one of these days, we will leave this age of realization, of industrialization. And we, one of these days, we will enter into an age of no more. Guess what, brethren? The Bible tells us that there will be no more death. Yes. Think of a world with no more death. The Bible says there will be no more hospitals. Yes. Think of a world with no more hospitals. Yes. Oh, there will be no more federal homes. Yes. I praise God for them. Yes. Amen. Yes. But one of these days, they will be out of business. Yes. One of these days, we leave this earth and we'll be ushered into a world of no more. One of these days, we're going to see Hallelujah Square. One of these days, the Bible says, the Lord will be with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, because Cheryl, I believe, I'm saying what I believe. Allow me to say what I believe, amen. I believe that Cheryl died with a voice of a trumpet. And when resurrection morning comes, and God blasts that trumpet, Cheryl will arise. And when she read the first verse that I believe that she will look for, is Reagan. <laughs> and then she will say, Reagan, where is Reagan? And I know by God's grace, Reagan will be there. But then Rayan might bring some grandchildren and some great great grandchildren. If Jesus declared, and she'll say, what are, what are all these people? She's your same mommy. You left a legacy of faith. And I'm sure I kept faithful. I'm sure I taught my children what you taught me. All the sacrifices and what you did was not in vain. And here is a multitude of people because of the legacy that you left. And I could see all brother God look and all sister God look and all sister Penguche and then they will look to Jesus and then Jesus face will be a smile the songwriter says that just one glimpse of Jesus smile will all the pain of this life be repaid and just to see Jesus smile we will shout it was worth it heaven indeed is cheap one of these days, uh, we will take up on Hallelujah Square, and I could just see a new land's posse. Come on, old pop fry. Come on, I could just see a new land's posse uh, pulling up on Hallelujah Square, and we will go down, chipping down the street like that looks like gold. Uh, we may not be playing golden harps. Uh, we might be playing golden steel pans because we are Trinidadians. Uh, but we will take up there, and the Bible says that there shall be no more night but God himself will be with us and he shall be our light yes. my brothers and sisters let us weep now but let us know that I read the book and I read that Satan got a good curtail I read from Revela Genesis to Revelation and guess what Satan lost guess what he lost and guess what even now his law has lost because this is the best that he can do Satan can do nothing else but guess what Jesus still up another move he's still up another move what is this God will shout yeah. and the dead Christ but the right word, Satan, you have lost. You can do nothing else. But I praise God that God has a move. God has another move. For one day, he will come and take his sure at home. He has the keys and he has but another move. I trust him looking faithfully to this another move. So the just shall live by faith. 
Even so, come Lord Jesus. We want to invite the family of the deceased to stand at this time. As I invite Pastor Josiah to give us the prayer of comfort, followed by Sister Shelly Ann Christopher Henry for the vote of thanks, and an item of special music by Sister Alicia Guadalupe. So for the family at this time, the family of the deceased, stand at this time, if you can. Okay, I want to, yes, I want to call, call the family, if you can come as close to the casket as possible. The family members, Regan and Rian. Of course, we have the siblings, Alicia, Jamison, Sean and sherri Tanisha. Mother-in-law is here, Mary Bologna, okay, praise the Lord. Okay. I did spend a, a, a bit of time in Newland some years, some years ago. And so from that time, I, I, I knew her a bit, a bit. I want to share something with the family just before I pray. I want you to know that, that, that Satan would try. He would try to deceive you in this time of vulnerability. He would try. He would try to make it appear as though she can talk to you. He may try that, you know? And I want you to know that you have to stand on God's word. You have to stand on God's word. Because God's word is true and powerful. God shall comfort you. I want you to know that. God will comfort you. God, and he's already begun to do so. All right? And I, I just want to, to highlight that through the years, I noticed a tender love between Cheryl and Rianne, mother and daughter. She was from Vega de Orapuch, which I pastored. I noticed that tender love. And I'm saying that Christ has a tender love for his church. Amen. Lastly, I want to encourage gently that the family members would recommit their hearts to Jesus. Amen. Take this opportunity to do so, please. Let's bow our heads for prayer at this time. Father in heaven, we come before you at this moment, O oh God. We beseech you, dear Father, to come in our very midst, O oh Father. We pray, Lord, that the Holy Spirit's presence will be here amongst the family members. Father, only like you can, I beg you to comfort your children today. Comfort, comfort Rudan Bolondi and comfort Rianne. Comfort the siblings, Alicia, Jameson, Sean, Sharlan, Sharian, Tanisha. Comfort them, Mary Bolandia, the, 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 the mother-in-law, Malcolm. Comfort all of them, Father. You know what they're going through. We really don't have an, an, a, a real idea, but you know. And we thank you, Lord, for being the God of comfort. We pray, Father, that you would shield them from the deceptions of the evil one, even from Satan, even in this time of their vulnerability and grief and pain. Oh, God, we pray, Lord, in the name of Jesus, that you will protect them from the influences of the evil one and that they would stand on the word of God. Father, I pray, Father, that you would remind them that Sister Dear Cheryl Bologna lived a life in Jesus Christ. She lived a life of faithfulness, a life of love, a life of service, oh God. I pray, Father, that we long, that the family members indeed would long for that day, long for that time, long for that opportunity. When Jesus Christ, as he comes down the skies of glory, he would say, come forth. And Sister Cheryl 
would come forth and they would be there to greet her never more to part oh god we long for that day we believe in jesus christ who is the resurrection and the life oh father in the day and in the night in the evening seasons and when there is the the, the, the tendency to become depressed and deeply saddened I pray, Lord, that your Holy Spirit will come by the side of every family member to let them know that it's okay. I will comfort you. Father, help that all of us to look forward to the coming of Christ. And when Jesus Christ shall return, may we see our dear sister again, Sister Cheryl Abalondia. And may we all, all of us be saved in your eternal kingdom we thank you in jesus precious name amen, amen. 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 Thank you all for being a friend, a good friend. 
Thank you to all who would have contributed to the service. I want to especially thank the musicians that are with us. 
thank you so much for rendering your service to the church of the living God. This time we want to stand as we pray. After the prayer, we will have one final viewing. And then we will head out. Your heads are bowed and your eyes are closed as we pray. Father, we thank you for a wonderful life. Yes. A wonderful soul yes. that you would have given to this world, God. Yes. Oh, Father, your word says that those who believed in you, the world was not worthy of them, Father. Oh, Father, there is a mansion in glory for all of us. Oh, but there are decisions to be made, Father. Sister Cheryl has made her decision. Even now, even if she trusted in you to the very end, God. And now you give her rest because she was tired. Thank you for rest in Jesus. Uh, help us to know that there is rest in Jesus, God. And that Jesus loves us with an everlasting love. Help us to be ready to meet our Savior in the air. Forever we shall be, never to part anymore. Bless the family. Comfort them once more, Father. And be with us as we sojourn in this life to the second coming of your dear son, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. the Williams sisters to sing as the viewing happens. We also want to air a presentation from the school in tribute to our dear sister. The viewing has been done. You come up on the side here and you can exit. Right, so you come up, you view, you can go either to the right or to the left. And I accept it back down. For those who have the hymnal, we are going to sing 474. Take the name of Jesus with you, 474. Take the name of Jesus with you, child of sorrow.
God, we look to you tonight. Above the singing, God, above the music, above the songs, let your name be lifted high, Jesus. Let your name be honoured, God. And we commit all that we are to you, God, and everything that we do. And we reach towards you, Jesus.
Your 
As we gather here at this time, even to, as we celebrate the life of Sister Cheryl, Heavenly Father, it, it, it's only because of your grace we are able to be here one with the other. I ask, O so God, at this time that you will come near unto us, O God. Comfort, comfort our hearts and be with us, we pray. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, we'll have this scripture then. First Thessalonians chapter 4 and verse from verse 13. But I do not want you to be ignorant, brethren, considering those who have fallen asleep. Lest you sorrow as others who have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, 
Even so, God will bring with him those who sleep in Jesus. Oh, yeah. Amen. For this we say to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will by no means proceed those who are asleep. Yes, For the Lord himself shall descend with a shout, yes. with the voice of the archangel, the trump of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Amen. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Therefore, comfort one another with these words. Amen. Amen. As much as God in his infinite love and wisdom has permitted our dear sister Sherilyn Cheryl Guadalupe Bolondia to fall asleep in Christ, we do tenderly commit her body to the ground in the sure and certain hope of a joyful resurrection when our Lord shall return in glory. Then this body of our humiliation shall be changed and made like unto his glorious body, according to the mighty working whereby he is able even to subdue all things unto himself. Thank you, Jesus. As we bow our heads one more time, Father, we thank you, God, for a race well run. Yes, Lord. She has fought a good fight of faith. Amen. As we are here, we still have to fight that fight, Father. Yes, yes. Strengthen us, God. Help us to meet. Help us to reunite yes. with Sister Cheryl and the saints of all ages, God. Yes. Oh, yeah. uh, comfort the family at this time. Yes, Jesus, please. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Shall I have some music at this time? Let's sing, Buffy, let's sing.
Praise the Lord. Hi, brethren. The family of the late is a Cheryl and God look along the earth. Wishes to express their sincerest thanks and appreciation for all those who called, visited, attended the funeral, and reached out in any way. We are greatly appreciate, we are greatly encouraged by your support and your prayers. May God continue to bless you. And therefore, the church, the pastor of the church, Pastor David Leonard, the pastor of the New Lansdown Adventist District, and also the pastor of the Rio Clara District, Pastor Ron Josiah, thank you for the opportunity to minister to you in this very difficult time. The church assure you that they're going to be there to give the support for the Regan and Sister Rayan, Sister Alicia, for the Chambers to the entire family as we journey on. Brothers and sisters, let us endeavor to always remember the life of this great woman of faith. Amen. And please, as much as she bless you, please don't forget the family. Oh, yeah. Please don't forget a call. Don't forget encourage. Don't forget she has a daughter. She has a husband who will need your support Amen. as the days go on. We thank God that Sister Cheryl died in the Lord. Amen? Amen. And therefore Job said, if a man dies, shall he live again? The question is asked. And he said, all the days of my appointed time I will wait until my change come. Yes, sir. And therefore, Sister Cheryl is waiting until a change come. Only those who know the voice of God when they are alive will respond to that call. Amen. My prayer and our desire, our hope is and after you've listened to the message, after you've listened to the voice of God, that you'll ensure that you do all you need to do yes, to Lord. know the voice of God while it's your life. Yes, when he calls resurrection morning, there will be a great reunion. May God keep us. Amen. May yes, God hold us. Pray for each other. Support each other. One day death will die. Thank you. One day the last the last sermon will preach. Amen. The last grave will be covered. Yes, sir. One day yes. death will be no more. Until then, you, let's journey on faithfully trusting in God and God will keep us. Pastor, let's pray. Father, we thank you for the blessed hope. Yes, Lord. Father, one day this ugly thing called death will die. Yes, Lord. One day, Father, the song will say, oh, death, where is thy sting? O oh, grave, where is thy victory? Yes, we ask, Father, that you'll mark this spot. This is yes, your daughter. Yes, and Father, when the trouble of the Lord shall sound, and the dead in Christ shall rise, we pray, we believe, we know that Sister Cheryl will meet you in the clouds. Yes, Lord. And all those of us who remain shall be called up to meet you in the air. Help each one of us to make our peace calling and election sure. Yes, we leave this place with the reality that one day if God doesn't come very soon, we too shall die. Help us to keep this reality in our mind and therefore to live with the understanding that we are not immortal. We must one day give it a come. Oh God, help us. Help us to keep our eyes upon you. Be the comfort, be the strength that this family needs. The days ahead will be difficult. But God, your presence yes, Jesus. is what they need. Amen. Oh God, keep Ryan. Yes, Lord. Please, God. Keep Mother Reagan. Yes, Lord. Keep Alicia. Yes. Keep Jameson and yes. all the family. Please, God, keep them. Yes, Jesus. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I see this thing driving up. I
So I yield to you. 